hello and welcome to this julia regression 101 video so before i begin this video let me show you how to first open this notebook for working with julia codes so this is similar to how you do python so once you open your jupyter notebook in this new thing over here you just need to use julia 1.5.3 or any other version of julia which you have pre-installed so i've already made that introductory video and i would link that in the description box you can check that out how to install julia and all those elementary ideas it's pretty similar to how python 3 works so instead of python 3 i'll go to julia 1.5.3 now i have already done that so i've created this regression 101 uh, notebook now this is a julia notebook essentially now the thing is i've already done a lot of analysis on this so i will first do one thing that i will restart and clear output so that i can show you how, how the steps are to be performed to do a basic regression analysis so restart and clear all outputs so it will take some time and restart everything it will erase everything which has been run previously now you see there's a one here two written over here so these are denoting that this code has been already been run so if you restart and clear output autumn this will yeah now you see this is empty so this is not run now try to understand it from the very basics the first two chunks which you're seeing over here is for the beginners as in let's say your system has not installed these packages data frame csv plots lathe glf st stat plots and ml base so in the beginning you have to use the first two chunks of code just press on that cell and do a shift enter now i'm not doing it because it takes a lot of time and i have already pre-installed them so i don't need to worry about them so i'll start from the third chunk okay and obviously i'll not be using all the packages over here in this particular video but still i felt that maybe i'll include all the packages so that it becomes kind of a continuous process if i make a part two of this video or a part three and so on so definitely i will be using the same code and just adding lines onto them right so that makes life a lot easier so the moment i run this it will take a bit of time a couple of minutes right so Running the packages, rather I should say, uh, loading the packages takes around a couple of minutes or so. Now, probably this is because of a fixed cost or something or my slow Mac. But yeah, it's it's kind of uh, slow compared to uh, Python in my system. In my system, Python works uh, faster. But yes, I've heard that Julia is better for computational speed. So maybe it will be better if I have to do a lot of calculation. There could be, see, in economics also, if you see, there's a fixed cost and variable cost. So maybe Julia has a high fixed cost and uh, has a very low variable cost and Python the other way around. Over here, you could have seen that there would have been star in the beginning. Now it has changed to one. So one, the moment it turns to a number from star, it means that your chunk of code has run. And yes, it has not thrown any error or warning messages. So we are good to go. Now let's make a data frame. So ours will be a very simple data frame, a dependent column and an independent column. So essentially I'm not worried about how many elements we have chosen for the dependent or independent. We just need to demonstrate how to do regression. So let's do a shift enter on this. And you see there's a star over here. It will change to a number and two just because the previous one was one. So this will change to two the moment it has been run completely. You see, it has been changed to two. And by default, Julia also prints out the variable which you have uh, created. So DF is a data frame which has 15 rows and two columns. And the column names are dependent and independent, right? So now we can proceed further for our linear regression, simple linear regression. In Julia, first you have to define a formula. So this FM is a formula and this formula has to be uh, bundled through the lm command so fm the formula is gone through the lm function root and it is run on df data frame and you see this is our df data frame now what is the formula dependent tilde dependent which means that this dependent column is your uh, y and this independent is your x if i have to just correlate with the usual textbook definitions of dependent and independent so y is equal to uh, your intercept plus the slope into independent right so over here if i just run this chunk of code i will 
get the summary statistics of the regression simple linear regression again you can see that there's a star over here and it will change to 3 the moment it has been run so it changes from blank to star to 3 as you can see now now you can see that you have pretty much uh, generated all the summary statistics coefficient standard error t statistics p value and the uh, lower and the upper 95 percent values so we are just interested in currently the p-value. So the p-value is 0.09 for the intercept and 0.06 for the uh, your independent uh, variable. Now definitely these are not very bad p-values but not very good as well. But so let's just analyze where we could have gone wrong. So first thing is we need to understand how the fit is of this model. So to get that we have to uh, run this command r square or r2 you can say r2 linear regression because linear regression is a variable which has stored our model. So shift enter. So you can see that r square is pretty low. Now what about the co correlation? Now definitely correlation is a square root of your r square when you just have one independent variable or you can say correlation square is your r square just do this you will get 0.497 so essentially the correlation between dependent and independent is pretty low now you can also convince yourself with a scatter plot now a lot of people do it the other way around i have just reversed the entire steps just to show you the bare essentials because people start with first making a scatter plot then they do a correlation and then they build the model but I have just turned around the whole sequence just to give you a better uh, feel of the video because a lot of people just come to the video to look at how to do the regression right that's why I don't I did not kill your time by giving you correlation and scatter plot in the beginning so if you're, if you're still here let me just run scatter plot for you as well so just put a shift enter to this now how to do scatter plot it's pretty simple it's scatter command then your independent df dot the column which has your independent then df dot your dependent and the thing over here is I have made my columns specifically independent and dependent so that it becomes intuitive to understand what to put where now title dependent versus independent label y label is your independent x label is your independent legend false I don't need legends now obviously scatter plot also takes amount of time around couple of minutes similar to your loading the packages. So the moment it will turn from star to a number it means that the scatter plot is run. So you can see the scatter plot is run and uh, see there is a guy over here an outlier kind of person. If you just remove this outlier guy you can see the fit is not that bad right. But we will not be doing an outlier kind of an analysis in this video. It's a pretty basic regression 101 video and I will reserve that for a future video. But I hope you got the steps how to perform linear regression only with one independent variable. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe because in this channel you can find content related to data science, mathematics, economics, finance and anything related to knowledge.